Good morning and welcome. In today's session, we're going to be looking at the area of spanning tree. All right, so we're going to be exploring a few concepts. So we're going to be looking at spanning tree, minimum spanning tree. We'll be looking at the application of minimum spanning tree. We're also going to be looking at uh, two main minimum spanning tree algorithms. That's its Pascal algorithm and the Prince algorithm. So we're going to be looking at how we can use those to calculate our, and determine the minimum spanning tree. Now, given an undirected graph, an undirected and connected graph, a spanning tree may be viewed as a tree that represents a subgraph of the graph. Okay, so there are certain properties that a spanning tree should hold. Now, the spanning tree should have no cycle. All right, the spanning tree should have no cycle. Now, your spanning tree should consist of all the vertices that are in the graph. All right, so your spanning tree consists of all the vertices in the graph with zero cycle. So there should be no cycle in your spanning tree. Now, the cost of a spanning tree is the sum of its of the weights on its edges. All right, so the cost. So you may be asked to calculate the cost of a spanning tree. Now the cost of a spanning tree is a sum or the total of the weight on the edges. Now in a given graph, there may be many spanning trees that you can derive. All right. Now our focus today is really on the minimum spanning tree. Now the minimum spanning tree is going to be that spanning tree that has the lowest cost, all right? So the minimum spanning tree is a spanning tree where the cost is minimal among all these different spanning trees. So after you have drawn all the different spanning trees, the one with the lowest cost is gonna be your minimum spanning tree. Now there are cases where you may have more than one minimum spanning tree. Now, minimum spanning tree algorithm, it's very applicable. Um, there are many cases where the minimum, minimum spanning tree has to be uh, determined. And there are cases such as in the design of network. So you may be designing a network. You may want to ensure that you're using the shortest possible routes. All right. We have other systems. We have like the navigation systems that we now use. We have like Google Map, right? That most persons use for navigation. And of course, applications like those do depend on the minimum spanning tree concept, all right? And there are many other situations like the traveling salesman and cluster analysis and writing recognition, image segmentation, among many other application areas for the minimum spanning tree. All right. So remember, as we said earlier, that a given graph may have multiple spanning trees. All right. Now look at this scenario before us. So here we have a very simple graph. All right. So we have a graph with four nodes, and we're speaking about the one in orange. All right. So we have a graph here with four nodes, as you can see here. So we have node one, node two, three, four, all right? Now, there are many spanning trees that could be drawn from here. Now, remember, as I said earlier, the spanning tree is going to be a tree which represents a subgraph with all the vertices within your graph. So all four vertices must be included in the spanning tree. Now, let's look at the first spanning tree that we could have drawn here. So remember the aim is to include all the vertices. All right, so here we have one. So here we have the node here. This node is included, this one, this one, this one. All right, now here is our, sp our spanning tree. So the spanning tree would include this line coming down. If you notice the lines are bold, so we come this way, this way, this way, all right? So this was drawn with no particular order in mind. 
right? So no party order in mind. So we just want to ensure that we have all the vertices, right? So all the vertices should be included, right? And of course, this is a spanning tree. Another spanning tree that we could have drawn is over here. Notice this one, we draw the line from here, up and around. So we would have included all four vertices. You notice there are some edges that are omitted. So we have like the edge here is left out, the edge here is left out, just the ones in bold. All right, so the idea is to ensure that the tree consists of all the vertices that are in the um, that are in the graph. All right. All right. Notice so this one has all the vertices one, two, three, four. All right. So once all the vertices are included and there are no cycles, for example, if we had included the edge here, there would be a cycle because we could start here, go up here, come down here, and come back here. That would be a cycle. So in drawing your minimum spanning tree, tree or in drawing a spanning tree part here, there should be no cycles. Now, this is how we go about calculating the cost of the spanning tree. Now, so we calculate the cost. So the cost of this spanning tree is going to be the value or the weight of the edges. So it's going to be four plus five plus two. So we only add up the edges that are included in the spanning tree. So in this case, the cost for this spanning tree is going to be 11, right? Now over here, we have another spanning tree that is derived from this graph. And notice this vertex, this one, this one, this one. These are the vertices, these are the edges right, that are included. And now we're gonna add them up. So we add up our four, our one, and two. Of course, this is not included and the type is not included. And so we have a cost of seven. Now, the minimum spanning tree in this case is going to be the spanning tree with the lowest cost. And so in this case, it is going to be the one whose cost is seven, which is this one. So if you're asked to draw the minimum spanning tree for this graph, of course, this would be your answer. All right, so you draw this one. Now, you may be wondering, what guiding principle did we use to determine the minimum spanning tree? Now, there are two main methods that are used to determine the minimum spanning tree. We have the Kruskal algorithm and we have the Prince algorithm. All right? So both of them are algorithms that are widely used to um, determine the minimum spanning tree all right, from a graph. Now the crystal algorithm is a very simple algorithm. What it does, it works by building a spanning tree by adding um, the shortest edges, right? So it builds a spanning tree by adding edges one by one. And these edges are gonna be the shortest edges that are in the, um, that are in the graph, right? So, so if you may, you may follow the steps here. So the first thing we're going to do is to start the graph edges with respect to their weight. So, you know, start them. You can do this mentally or you can write them down. And what we're going to do is start by adding edges to the minimum spanning tree. So we start by adding the, the smallest weighted ones, all right? So we add them until we would have added the largest. I'll go through an example so you can actually see, all right? So we only add edges which doesn't form a cycle. So if, if we notice that upon adding a particular edge, a cycle would be formed, then we would have um, ignored that particular edge. All right, so let's look at this example. Next, you can look at some others. All right, so we're gonna look at a cross call. All right, so we can start anywhere. So just look for the shortest possible um, edge. So you can start at anyone. So here we're starting here. Let's start by adding this one. That's the one here with one, all right? So that is added. 
and then you can look through the tree for the other chart is one and that's going to be the one with two all right so if you follow the arrow here so this is the first one that will be added all right and then we add the one with two all right so keep looking so now that we have added the one with one and the one with two which other one can we include all right so just ensure that no cycle is created and as you can see here we could include the one with three right three being the smallest one and that's what we have over here so since three is the smallest one so we have to check at all times to ensure that we have all the vertices so so far we have the one two three four so we have four vertices so far now the next vertex to be added is six all right so now we're gonna have to we're gonna have to look for the one with the the shortest edge that may connect or unconnected vertex all right so let's look and see if we can find the one with the shortest possible edge all right so this one over here so notice the edge that connects to here the shortest one that we may use to connect to this is going to be the one with i all right so that's what's done down here so if you notice down here we have it all right i'm going to go through another example with you and we're looking at the crystal algorithm all right so I'll just get that diagram up all right so let's start with a simple one all right so here's one all right so based on the algorithm we're going to start by adding the vertex the vertices from the edge that is the smallest edge so we're going to look, at, look for the smallest edge in this case this tree all right so we're going to be adding this one let me just ensure it's preserved the original All right, so we're going to be adding this one. All right, so now that we have added this one, we can then look for the next shortest um, edge. So the next one would be, uh, let's look. So we have five, six, seven, four. First, I'm going to go with the one with four. That's the shortest one we have there. So I'm going to get this one. Good. So now we have, so remember, we just, the, the aim is to include all the vertices. All right, so I want to include all the vertices. And what the cross call algorithm does it includes the edges one by one, all right? So we try to include the shortest edges, all right? And we try to do that in ascending order. So we would have a look at the edges, look at the weight on the edges, and we try to include them one by one, ensuring that no cycle is formed by doing this, all right? All right, so now that we have included vertex one, two, and vertex three, the next one that we need to look at. So if you look, the next shortest edge could be the one with five. If you notice here, if we were to add this, this edge here, if we were to add the edge with five, of course, if we were to put this in, that would be a problem. Because if that is done, we're gonna have a cycle. That means we can start here, go there, go up there and come back here. All right, so that's going to create a cycle so we cannot include that one all right so even though five would be the smallest among seven six and five 
we can include five, right? So no need to include five here. All right, so let's look at the next one. So the next smallest would be six, we wanted six, all right? So we can include six. And of course, six would not create a cycle. So let's do that one. All right, so that would be our minimum spanning tree. And of course, we can calculate the cost of this minimum spanning tree. And this is using the Kruskal algorithm, all right? So the cost of this would be the cost would be equal to the total of the weights. So that's going to be three plus four plus six. All right. So that's going to be equal to that's 10 plus 3, 13. All right. So the cost of this minimum spanning tree using the cross call method is uh, 13. All right. Let's look at another example. All right. So here we go. So here we have. Another one. And so this one has a little more. So again, our aim is to keep all the vertex, all the vertices, all right, but ensure that we use a minimum cost. All right, so remember with the crystal algorithm, we can start anywhere. All right, so I'm going to start with one of the smallest. All right, start with the smallest edge. All right, so, so far, the smallest edge we have here is three. So we have three, yeah. So three is the smallest one. All right. And of course, three connects um, vertex two and vertex four. Let me just take a small diagram. So I have three. All right. So I'm going to start with this three. So I include that edge. All right. Now the next shortest edge. So just look for the next shortest edge that is to be included. And if we analyze the graph well, we notice that we have an, another tree. Can we include the other tree? Yes, we can because it doesn't create a cycle. All right. So we're gonna include that one. Want to destroy three and just copy. All right. Now, the next thing that we are going to include so, since we have included both three, the next one we have here is four. Can we include four? All right, let's see what would happen if we include four. So if we include four, four is going to create a cycle. So four cannot be included. All right, so four is going to end up with this. No cycle, please. All right, so since four is out, 
let's see, let's put an X here, four is not a part of it. All right, and we have done the trees already. Trees run already. All right, so I'm gonna pull trees. All right, so since four is not a part of it, uh, what about five? Yes, of course, five would not create a cycle, so we could include a five. And I'm going to copy that. All right, so here's five. And no cycle is created. All right. The next one of the five we would have. The five is there. There another five. No. Oh, we have a six. Could we include six? Yes, we could. All right, because it doesn't create a cycle, so we can include it. All right, so we'll copy this one. All right, so, so far we have included all of these vertices, this one, this one. There's only one vertex that is left to be included and that's gonna be over here, all right? That's gonna be the one over here, all right? So, so let's see, all right? So we would have included six, whereas we would now reach at seven. Now, the question is, which of these to use since both of them are seven, all right? So this is seven and this is seven, all right? Of course, we could use anyone. So this is a scenario where we could have more than one minimum spanning tree. So because we could have four to six, or we could have five to six, all right? I'm just gonna use four to six. So let's put up my line here. Let's remember we had this line here. Let's add this one as well. And this one. All right, so this is what our minimum spawning tree for this graph is like. And that's using the cross calls algorithm. All right, so we have included all the vertices and there are no cycle. All right, so no cycle is in this. And so the cost of this, let's sort for the cost. So the cost is going to be Six plus five plus three plus seven plus there was a tree here plus three. Let's go by that tree. Right, so there was a tree on this edge. All right. So it therefore mean that the, the, the total of this would be equal to 11 plus 10 plus three. That's 11 plus three, that's 14 plus seven, 21 plus three plus 24. Therefore, mean that the cost of this minimum spawning tree 
is 24. And of course, you can work it out for yourself. And this is done using the cross columns already. Right? Let's do one more. So here's another one. All right, so again, we're just gonna stick to the principles that we outlined earlier for the first columns algorithm. So again, we start by adding the shortest vertices. All right, so another technique that we could use when we're doing this, Now, since you know that all the vertices will be included, you could just draw them. So you could just draw about the vertices. I'm gonna take out these edges. All right, so I went ahead and I, I just remove the edges um, just to leave us with the vertices. Of course, the minimum spanning tree will include all the vertices that are in your graph. All right, so now let's analyze this to see which one to include. All right, so again, with the first calls algorithm, we try to identify the shortest uh, edges and try to do that in ascending order. So the shortest one here is going to be four. And once it doesn't create a cycle, we can include it. So we're going to include the one with four here. Right, so I'm just going to connect these. Four. Let's go back the weight on it. Just four in that case. And if it has a weight of four, good. And next, we just look through for the next shortest edge. Uh, so four, we have four. All right, so the next one we have is six. All right, so based on the sequence of things, we have six. So let's connect six here. I remember we're using the cross calls algorithm. All right, so we can put on about the weight for that. That is six. So we're going to ensure that we create no cycle at all. All right, so once no cycle is created, we are good to go. No cycle so far. All right, so after six, we would have, let's see if there's anything less than eight. No, there's nothing less than eight. All right, so we could include this one and check. If we include this, does it create a cycle? No, it doesn't, so we can include it. And that's going to be eight. All right. So now that we have included eight, the next shortest one that we have here is nine. Can we include nine? Nine is going to connect this to this. Now that's no cycle, so that's fine. So we can include nine. I'm going to include nine here. All right, so we can put down the weight for this, this is nine. All right, so let's see. So after nine, we have, all right, so next number after nine, we have is 15. That's 15, all right, good. So what can we include here for 15? 
right? So as you can see here, there are several 15s. There are several 15s that we, we may include, right? So the aim is not to create any cycle, right? So the aim is not to create any cycle, right? So here we have a 15 here, a 15 here, and a 15 up here, all right? So since all of them have the same weight, of course, we can include them once no cycle will be created, all right? So once no cycle will be created, of course, we can go ahead and include them. All right, let me start by including this one. So this weight is 15. All right, I know cycle has been created. All right, the next one is the one that connects ADL to ASP. And no, I cannot include that one because if I do, I want to create a cycle. So I'll be connecting. I will be able to move from here, over there, here, there, and come back. That's the cycle we don't want. That. This one cannot be used, all right? But that's because I started with this 15. All right, so let's see if there, we can use the other 15. All right, so the other 15 connects DRW to ASP, and that's not a cycle. So it's free to, to use that one. So that's 15. All right, so now that we have done our 15, all right, so we still have some unconnected vertices. All right, so after 15, we would have the edge uh, 22 based on the sequence. So we have 22. Can we use 22? All right, yes, we can because no cycle will be created. So just include 22. All right. And let me just add the weight so we can do a calculation. All right. So the next one that we have is all right, so following 22, what do we have? All right. So we have 30. All right, can we connect CNS to DRW? No. If we do, we're going to create a cycle. Right? We don't want to make a cycle. So this one cannot be used either. This one be used. All right, so we have 30. All right, the next one we have here is 31. Can 31 be used? 31 connect ASP to DME. ASP to DME. No, that can't be used. That would create a cycle. Now the next one that we have is 31. All right, so we're now down to 42. No, we have a 32. Yeah, we have a 32, right? So good, pay attention. All right, so can we use a 32? Yes, we can, because it would not take us out. All right, so connect these two. And let's put on the weight. It's 32. Good. And therefore, I mean that or that would be our minimum spanning tree because it includes all the vertices. So our cost will be equal to 32 plus 8 plus 6. Plus four, thirty two plus eight plus six plus four plus nine plus fifteen plus fifteen plus twenty two. All right, so that seems like 
about 111. So we can double check it. And let's confirm with me the proposal. Right, so like about 111. All right, so we'll confirm it. So that's 40 plus 10, 50. And 59, 89, then we have 390, 90 plus 10, that's 100, 111, yeah. All right, good. So that will be the cost of the minimum span entry. All right, so that's how we do it using the cross calls, the cross calls algorithm. All right, so we're now going to look at the Prims algorithm. So let's jump back to the slide and let's look at the Prims algorithm. Now, with the, with the Prims algorithm, they, we go the spanning tree from a starting position. All right, so it's slightly different from the first calls algorithm. All right, so here are the basic steps. So we ensure that we maintain two disjoint set of vertices, right? That contains um, the vertices. So basically what happened is that we grow the spanning tree based on the edges that consist of the shortest weight or the, the edge with the shortest weight. All right, so we're going to start at a particular vertex, and from that vertex, it will connect edges that are minimum in comparison to what has already been connected. All right, so we maintain two disjoint set of vertices, one containing the vertices that are in the growing spanning tree, and the other asset that it that's the set, the, the remaining ones from the graph, right? Now, what we do is that we select the cheapest vertex that is connected to the growing spanning tree. So we'll understand it better from an example. All right, so we start off with a particular vertex. Then we connect the shortest possible edge to that vertex. And then we look for the other vertex, the other edges that are shortest that may be connected. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, so look at this one. Let's say we start off with um, this vertex. All right, so we start off with this one. All right, so the next vertex that is to be added is going to be the one that is shortest, has the shortest edge. All right, it's Prim's algorithm again. All right, so we would have connected this vertex here because it has one. All right, now we, unlike the Chris calls algorithm, we don't jump and just search for another shortest um, edge. We have to search for a shortest edge that is connected to the vertices that are already connected. So for example, the only edge, edges that we could connect now are this one, this one, are this one. We could not just jump and connect these two, all right? So now, in terms of the ones that have already been connected, the shortest edge that may be added would be a two, all right? So that's why we, we add two here. I know that we have added these three, then of course we can then connect to any one of them. But then we only connect the one that is the shortest edge. So in this case, we connect four. And of course, that is our minimum spawning tree. So our minimum spawning tree would exclude five from the picture. All right, let's look at some of some other examples using the the Prince algorithm. Right. So we would have used so far. We have used the we have used the um cross cards. Right. So we're now going to look at how we would use the Prim's algorithm. Right, so that's the
So the cross columns, this is the cross column. And we are now going to look at the prims algorithm. All right, so with the prims algorithm, all right, guys, we start at a selected vertex. All right, so we're going to start at vertex one. All right. Select vertex one here. All right, so that's vertex one. So from vertex one, what I'll have to do is look for the shortest edge that is connected to vertex one, right? So the shortest edge connected to vertex one is going to be um, three, which has vertex two. All right, so let me just check that. And now that we have vertex, one and vertex two um, in our minimum spanning tree. Again, we're using the prims algorithm over here. This one is the prim. So now that we have vertex one and vertex two, based on the algorithm, we're going to be selecting the the shortest edge that is connected to either vertex one or vertex two. So the shortest edge connected to vertex one or vertex two is going to be four. All right, so that's the edge between three and four. So let's use that one. And now that we have connected um, vertex one, two, and three, the idea now is to find the next edge, right? The next shortest edge that connects to any one of these vertex. We have to ensure that we don't create a cycle. Now the next edge could be five. But if we draw five, five is gonna create a cycle. So we put five there. Greater cycle, so we don't want, we don't need any cycle in our minimum spanning tree. All right, the next one there would be six. All right, so if we connect six, and of course six will be fine. All right, so we can just get six over here. And, uh, all right, so six is connected to vertex four. Six is fine. From the eight. Six. All right. Now we can work out the cost. So the cost will be equal to four plus three plus six. Which is going to be equal to 30. All right. So in this case, both algorithms give the same cost. All right, so let's look at another example. All right, and we're using the we're using the prims algorithm. All right, so so far we have looked at the two algorithms. So we have looked at the cross calls, and we have looked at the prims. All right, so we're gonna look at another example using the prims algorithm. So let me get another example. I'm going to use this one. All right, so we have done with this one. So this is the crystals. So this is the crystals algorithm. All 
All right, so I'm going to look at the prims algorithm using the same, same example. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Oops. All right, so that's the cross columns. Now we're going to look at the prints algorithm over here. And we're trying to find a minimum spanning tree from this graph here. All right, so we're trying to find a minimum spanning tree. Again, based on the based on the, the algorithm for the Prunes algorithm, we're gonna start at a vertex, all right? So we can start at any, any vertex that we'd like, all right? I'm gonna to choose to start at, all right, so I'm gonna start at vertex one, all right? I could start at vertex one, or if you want, you could start at vertex two, all right? So, Let's start at vertex one. Let's start at vertex one. All right, so from here, let's see the shortest edges that are connected to vertex one. So we have five. So five is the shortest. So we'd have to use five in our case. All right. So we'd have to use five. So we we'll use this one. And this connects to vertex two. All right. Now that, now that we have vertex one and two in the picture, we have to then look at the shortest edge that is connected to either vertex two or vertex one. All right, slightly different from, from the crystals. In the crystal, we have been looking for the shortest edge. So we just connect the shortest edges. So for example, if it was the crystals, we would jump ahead and connect um, vertex two to for, and of course, we then try to connect vertex. Um, the next shot is one, which is this, still this, right? But with this method, we start from the node. So we start at particular node and actually try to add edges that are connected to that particular node. All right. So, so from vertex one and vertex two, the shot is edge that we see here is three. All right, so three is connected to vertex two. So we're gonna connect vertex two. So vertex two will be connected to vertex four. So vertex two connected to vertex one. Good. All right. So now that we have all of those vertices, so we have vertex one, vertex two, vertex four. Now we can look for the other edges that are then connected to vertex one, vertex two, and vertex four. So look for the shortest ones and ensure that we don't have any spikes. So since we have one, we have six. So we have six, we have eight, we have four, and we have three. So the shortest one here is three, so I'm gonna use three, and that should not create any cycle. So 
So let's do that one. Make sure you connect to five. Perfect spot. All right. So now that we have vertex one, two, four, and five, so now we have to look for the shortest edge between each of them. So the shortest edge that is connected to either vertex one, or vertex two, or vertex four, or vertex five. All right. So the edge that is connected to vertex one is six, two is eight. Um, vertex two to vertex five, that's four. But we put that, if we put vertex four here, it's gonna create a cycle, but that is not needed. So we will not include that. All right, so what about vertex four and vertex five can be connected to vertex six. Again, both of them are the same width, so we can decide which one to use. Right, so we could use N1. Right, so I guess we've got the same one that I use. All right. Let's type over this. this line. Let's do this a couple of times. A line here. No way to tree here. All right. All right. So do we have everything as it? Not as yet. So we have all of these vertices, one, two, three, four vertices. All right, so then the one that is not connected now is going to be vertex three. And again, we look for the shortest edge that may be used to connect vertex three. All right, so. Vertex three connected to vertex one using six. And of course, we also have the option of connecting vertex five to vertex three. Of course, that would not create a cycle either. Right? So that is why we say that you may have multiple minimum spanning tree, right? Because there are cases where we have similar weights. And um, so, if, so here I use six to connect vertex three, but I could have used the six here as well. And this would not change the cost. All right, so this is a minimum spanning tree. So as you can see, both algorithm provide you with the same minimum spanning tree. All right, and uh, Sorry for the cost again. So the cost is going to be equal to six plus five plus three plus seven plus two. All right. That's twenty four. Good, so there you have it. So we have looked at the two main algorithms that are used to, the two main algorithms that we use to, um, to calculate the minimum spanning tree. All right. Thank you for joining and I hope you have a good day. All right, so please, Remember to go through these examples that we went through. And of course, after going back through this, you should have a better understanding of the minimum spanning tree 
its application in the two main algorithms, the Kruskal and the Prince algorithm that are used to calculate the minimum spanish. 